Tifu by reporting a theft at work. Tifu by reporting a theft at work. I am a PhD research scientist, and I work in a cancer research lab at a large and prestigious American university. Recently, Several people in my building have been the victims of theft from our desks overnight. Usually things like cash or iPods. One graduate student at what he said were an $800 pair of jeans stolen from his desk. My favorite watch was recently stolen from my desk when I forgot it there after a particularly grueling 14-hour day in the lab. I pieced together that the thefts all happened overnight when the monthly floor mopping janitorial crew worked in our building. I reported this to the building supervisor and camp campus security, and they took it seriously. They placed hidden cameras in a fake smoke detector and had me put out some marked cash bait on my desk. When the cameras were installed, I pointed them out to a couple co-workers in my lab. This is important for later on. The next week, the bait cash was stolen on the same night that the floor mopping crew visited our building. The cameras caught a janitor stealing the money, and he confessed to the other thefts. About a week later, just recently, one of my co-workers suddenly disappeared and cut all communication with us. It turns out that he was the subject of a fraud and sabotage investigation, and he had been suspected of deliberately destroying other people's experiments and faking data. This is a huge deal for lots of reasons. It's a big embarrassment to the university, and we receive federal grants to conduct research, so he was committing fraud with federal money. When I pointed out the hidden cameras to catch the janitor stealing from us, my co-worker freaked out, looked around the lab, and saw other hidden cameras. Apparently, campus security had been called into the fraud investigation, and placed the hidden cameras to catch him sneaking in the lab at night to sabotage experiments. The investigation was kept secret, and I had no idea that there were other cameras placed on the lab. When my co-worker put pieces together, he realized that he was under investigation. He destroyed as much evidence as he could, and fled the country back to Asia. The fraud investigation was ruined because I reported a theft and let my co-workers know about the bait. Since I had no idea about the fraud investigation, and had no intention of tipping off my co-worker, there will be no disciplinary action for me. But a lot of people were pissed off. I'm sure that the campus security office took some heat for not communicating about the multiple hidden cameras. And I never got my favorite watch back. El, doctor, I reported a theft at work, and screwed up a major fraud investigation by accidentally tipping off the subject of the investigation investigation. I don't think you messed up at all and did exactly what you should have. It's the college's fault for not conducting the investigation correctly and or not telling you to not inform your co-workers about the cameras. You had your own investigation and you took the correct steps to solve it. The college should have either informed you about the investigation and asked you not to tell anyone or should have placed the hidden cameras without letting you know in the first place. Ever occur to you? The people that got pissed off probably saw your watch get stolen. Faking one's work is bad enough but destroying other projects. Imagine if it were a new drug. The impact and ramifications are astounding. It hurts everyone. Another institute could waste time, resources and effort replicating something that is non-existent. NGOs could fund a similar drug using the same mechanism. The falsified data could be used by a company that will spend hundreds of millions of dollars only to be proven wrong in trials. Patients and families could be deprived of a drug rightly deserving of funding. This happened in Japan with stem cells recently and that scientist was publicly shamed. I think she should have been criminally charged to be honest. Suppose it were not a drug, that colleague that falsified data should be barred from research at all institutes because it sets research back by several decades. Funding can dry up for misplaced trust. Sorry, oh, these kind of stories make me boil. No way. It's totally not your fault. You worked with what you knew. Couldn't they have checked the cameras they already had up for his investigation? Tifu by spending years isolating myself from my family and having no one to spend the holidays with. I can't lie I hate my family, they've always been a close-knit group with me on the outskirts. I don't like the way they do things, I don't like how loving they are to each other. I don't like the way they do stuff and always leave me out. It's been that way for as long as I can remember. And I've played along with it I've decided to not have anything to do with them and as such have been alone for the majority of my adult life. I also have a son who's my mother won't let me meet. As more time goes on the more I feel hurt by it. It's Christmas Eve and I'm alone at home, 
a 12 pack in and feeling sorry for myself. That's not a life I want. TLDR, I didn't abide by my family's rules and don't have a relationship with them anymore and am alone on Christmas Eve. I'm sure you have and will always do the best you can. Never, ever, ever give up tomorrow is a new day and you will get your second wind. Merry Christmas to you. I know it may seem silly or fruitless but at the very least it will help you release. It may blow up in your face but it will be remembered. Call your family, whether a sibling or parents, and tell them you love them and wish them a Merry Christmas. Leave a message if you must, and leave it at I love you, Merry Christmas. If they throw it back in your face, then they are the ones being a Christmas crusher. I'm sure deep down they love you, even if they may deny it. We have a few people in our church that are spending Christmas alone this year, whether through divorce slash breakups or death. One had nowhere to go and I invited them over. I'm happy we were able to let her forget her troubles for even a short few hours, and she appreciated it. While you may not have anywhere to go, I want to say this. I don't know you beyond these words, but I am thinking of you this Christmas. Man, you took the words from my fingertips. I had two extra families in my house today due to one losing her husband the 19th from a car wreck, and her and her daughter didn't want to be alone. The other was a co-worker going through a rough divorce and him and his two children didn't want to be alone. They came and made memories and left with full hearts and stomachs. Thank you for your kind words to op at op make that phone call, don't sit and dwell on bad memories. Truth is, they may be waiting on that phone call as well. Sometimes all it takes is a few words to mend years of a broken heart. I truly do feel, op, I'm in the same situation. I seem to have pushed my family away as well. I am lucky enough though to have my partner. Otherwise, I'm pretty much in the same boat. My family decided they didn't want me. I've tried and tried to work things out. Eventually, I just gave up altogether. I'm suicidal and not handling the holidays very well. If it weren't for my partner, I truly would not be alive. But, truth is, you didn't zucchini up the butternut up by leaving you like that. I realize it doesn't seem like it, but here's hoping things get better for you. Much love over the holidays from someone who gets it. Please know that there in fact are people out there who care. We don't know your story, but whatever you've done, it's not late to embrace love. Find a place in which you can let your love out and pursue it. Bless you brother. It is just a day like every other. Just because someone advertised you have to be full of joy and love on that day doesn't mean you have to. I'm sorry that you feel so alone, I hope you can arrange something better next year to see your son. Tifu by eating a walnut. So this literally happened not 30 minutes ago and I'm still unbelievably traumatized while writing this, so bear with me. Every Christmas when I was a kid my dad would buy a bag of mixed nuts still in their shell. Long story short, my parents divorced and a lot of Christmas traditions were lost. So this year was myself and my girlfriend's first year having Christmas by ourselves. Her being the kind, considerate person she is, one of her stocking fillers was a wicker container of mixed nuts and a shiny new nutcracker. Fast forward to today, we're back from visiting her grandma, I've lit a fire and we've had our massive Christmas leftover sandwiches and a few beers. We're chilling on the sofa, watching TV and I reach over and grab the nuts and open the plastic covering, no thought in my head but to crack a few nuts open and have a nostalgic time with my girl. After a hazelnut or two and an almond, I go for a walnut and crack it perfectly, however a bit of walnut chips off and I pick it up and eat it. It was not a walnut, it was a coconut still alive larvae of some indeterminate bug. I take it from my mouth, throw it away from me, scream and lose all sanity in one single swoop. You see, I've been terrified, like had a legit phobia of wriggly things of all kinds since I was a little girl and fell in a compost bin with a load of maggots in it. So this would be like finding a spider in your mouth for you people with arachnophobia. The mental image of that thing will haunt me to my grave. Poor so doesn't know what's going on. I make it clear to her through a series of of sobs, whimpers and gestures while having a total mental breakdown on the sofa. She eventually has to bodily pick me up and take me outside since I was so petrified and traumatized that I couldn't move. Full on panic attack, can't breathe, retching, 
rubbing at my tongue with my sleeves. Girlfriend there the whole time through it feeling like she's done something terrible by buying me these nuts. I used to joke about how nuts aren't for lesbians anyways. Gets me some 40% vodka and rum, both of which I just chug. She goes downstairs, finds the bloody thing and contains it. Tells me it's all okay and not to worry. Calling Cheesecake Asda tomorrow because that is exactly the kind of thing that no one wants to find in a box of mixed cheesecake nuts. TLDR, have a phobia of worms, ate a walnut with a worm in it, had a bad time. Not sound for lesbians anyway. She's a keeper. No, she's so supportive in the face of sheer insanity lol. We've camped in the bedroom and she's making me hot chocolate and taking out board games to play. Truly wife material. Terrible time biting into apple and finding a worm. Really bad. Finding half a worm. I guess you won't be eating that cheese in Italy with me then. Lol. Adore you and this is horrendous. But it's also splitting my button outsides imagining your GF carrying you outside like a traumatized leprechaun. Please don't kill me three. I was indeed, in that moment, a traumatized leprechaun lol. Awesome, link Asda to this post too. If you eat nuts with worms in them, you're gonna have a bad time.